Hi, I'm Rob, and today we're going to talk about the A1C and the A2C uh, dowel pin drills, uh, how to run them, uh, how to operate them safely, and uh, get familiar with them. Uh, right here is where we connect our main air supply. We have a Chicago style fitting on here, uh, our oiler, and uh, steering wheel. We have the air regulator right here, uh, both the gauges for the, for the feed and the incoming air. Uh, we have our lift switch and the feed. We have, uh, this is a drill on and off switch. Uh, we have our lifting bale here. We can lift the machine from this point. Uh, the brake keeps our wheels from moving. And uh, the height adjustment rod guide right here. Okay, let's take a look at the, the bed here. Uh, we've got the uh, lift cylinder right here with our feed cylinder. Uh, this is the, the stop rod and the, the sliders, this whole unit that carries the, the drill itself. Um, we have the drill bearing guide down here on the bottom and we'll uh, show you that when we insert the drill steel. Okay, let's take a look at how to insert our drill steel. Um, now this piece of steel here is uh, 7 8 hex, 4 and a quarter uh, shank and uh, 24 inches under collar. We want to go to the drill and open the latch. Okay, and with a three quarter inch wrench, we want to loosen the drill bearing guide. Close the latch and then re-tighten down here. Okay, the oiler here, uh, we want to fill this at the beginning of every day and uh, every four hours. So before we open it, we want to press the red safety valve that lets any extra air out. Crescent wrench, we can open that up. Okay, now we want to fill it to the bottom of the threads here, um, but we need to set the gauge that allows the correct amount of oil to come through to the drill. So we want to turn it clockwise all the way till it stops. That's the closed position. See where the arrow is indicating and turn it five and a half increments up. So this one right now is reading at five and a half uh, because it's zeroed out at the zero point. Then we want to add our oil just to the bottom of the threads. and then we can re-tighten the safety cap. We here at Minute care about your safety, so please be sure to wear all the correct safety uh, equipment, uh, whatever your job site, state requirements, uh, whatever they regulate, you should be wearing that. We're about to work with the air here, so. Okay, like, like I said before, we have a Chicago style fitting. And we want to put on this. Okay, make sure you attach the safety lanyards. Once the fitting is properly installed and the safety lanyards are in place, then it's okay to go ahead and go back and turn your compressor on and uh, so you'll have air to the machine. Okay, now once we've connected the air, our incoming line pressure should read right about 120, and the feed pressure uh, should be anywhere from uh, 24 to 18. All right, when we position the drill, you need to uh, release the brake, and uh, you want it about six inches away from the side of the slab, and uh, then you reset the brake. Then uh, before we put the bed down, we need to, to remove the travel pin after we've made sure there's no one in the area. So remove the pin, replace it up top. Now when we lower the bed, the foot down here should rest onto the concrete slab and just kind of it'll draw the machine tight. Let's make sure that no one's around. 
We'll lower the boom. There you go, it's drawn it tight and uh, the drill is square to the slab and our drill is in position ready to drill. Okay, we want to look at how to set the, the height of the drill so that we can uh, position ourselves and where we want to drill on the slab. Um, we have our height adjustment rod right here in the jam nut. So if we want to drill, uh, we have a, about a 10 inch slab here. If we want to drill at uh, five inches, uh, we need to uh, actually come up about a quarter inch. So we want to loosen, I've got an inch and a quarter. We want to loosen the jam nut there. And then re-tighten the jam nut. Yep, and that's right about where we want to be. Okay, we need the horizontal drilling to be uh, level. So you can set a level right here on the rail, and then you can make any adjustments you need right here with this nut. This will thread in and out. You can lower or raise that there. Uh, inch and an eighth is the nut size. Okay, now we want to look at how to set the depth of the hole that we want to drill. We have our stop rod here and the stop pad. Um, but we need to get the drill steel and the drill to be up against the slab. So we want to remove the pin off the back so the drill can slide on the rail. And then we actually want to feed the drill into the slab. Okay, so now that the drill steel is up against the slab, this measurement will be true. So, let's see, if we want an 8 inch hole, we need to move the stop guide up to the 8 inch mark. So we need to loosen the jam nuts. Slide it forward to 8 inches. And then re-tighten the jam nuts in the correct position. Okay, now that our drill's in position and we've set the drill depth and height, um, we're ready to actually start drilling. So we want to turn the drill on, and then we need to turn our feed on, and, and it will automatically come in. Once it reaches the desired depth, then we can send it back out by turning the feed back out. So here's what that looks like. When you turn the feed back to the off position, once the drill reaches the back end of the rail, it will stop automatically. After we've drilled our first hole, um, we want to go ahead and lift the bed. And be sure to put the travel pin back in place. We can release the brake and move the drill to the next drilling position. And we can reset the brake. And what we want to do is we want to actually check the hole that we drilled to make sure that we got the correct depth before we continue on. And make sure, yep, we've got an 8 inch hole there. And that's what we were shooting for. When you're all done drilling for the day then, you want to make sure your travel pin is back in position. You can re replace the drill pin. After you've drilled a, a few holes, you want to stop and make sure you're getting the right amount of lubricant to your rock drill. And uh, the way you can do that is when the drill's not running, and you can put your finger on the inside of the exhaust deflector. You should have a nice oily film there. Also, a nice oily film uh, up on the shank of the drill. Okay, that's a good way to tell. And if you need more, then you can adjust it back in the oiler 
uh, with the screwdriver and the, and the gauge. Okay, so once we've got the bed back in position, we're ready to turn the air off. Uh, we need to turn our main source off back at the compressor or wherever your source is. Okay, and then um, before we actually disconnect this, we need to relieve the air pressure that's still in here. So we want to go up to our uh, drill and we want to go ahead and uh, turn the feed valve on and allow that to dissipate. Okay, and turn everything to the off position. And then you also want to relieve any air pressure that's still in the oiler. And I put a rag over it. And push that red valve down. And then you can remove the safety lanyards. And then replace the cap. Keep that free of debris. Please keep in mind when you're filling the oiler, uh, these are special tools. They require a special lubricant. Uh, we do have the Minic lubricant here, or you can refer to your manual for uh, recommended lubricants. We do have labeled the pinch points on the machine. Um, there's some decals that show those areas. Um, they are in your manual as well, but let's uh, take a look at a couple. Um, when this slider goes up and down the rail, obviously the pinch point at the top or the bottom um, is a pinch point and uh, we just kind of point some out here uh, obviously another moving part here at the end of the day you want to make sure this exhaust deflector uh, is in a down position because uh, you don't want that to be up and rain to come in that'll rust the inside of your drill okay uh, you also about every two weeks there's some grease points uh, around the wheels and the steering column and uh, several places around the machine you want to make sure you keep those well lubricated.